Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. Then did the video today, we're looking at the clicky turn signal. Motor vehicle directional signals have been around almost as long as cars, and as early as 1909, a device was patented that had a hand-shaped light that indicated to other drivers which way a vehicle intended to travel. Obviously, that one didn't catch on. Neither did the mechanical signaling device invented by silent film star Florence Lawrence in 1914, which, after a button was pushed by the driver, a sign would pop up from the rear bumper indicating which way the car was turning. The first modern directional signal was patented in 1925 by Edgar A. Walls Jr., although no one was interested in it either, at least until after his patent expired 14 years later. That's when, in 1939, the U.S. automaker Buick first introduced the flashway directional signal, which operated in the familiar way, a stick mounted on the steering column. In its original incarnation, this turn signal only flashed the rear lights, but by the next year, front lights were flashing as well. By the end of World War II, directional signals were standard in most American automobiles. While there are several different designs out there for turn signal switches, they classically used some form of thermal switch, in this case called a thermal flasher. The core of this switch includes a resistor that heats up when current flows through it. This is attached to a bimetallic spring, essentially an arched strip made up of two sandwiched metals with very different thermal properties, one that expands quite a bit as it warms and the other that doesn't. The result is that when the current is flowing, when you turn on the blinker, the resistor heats up the arched bimetallic spring, which in turn connects the two terminals, allowing the lights to come on. As it heats up, one of the metals begins to try to straighten itself out as it expands, but initially can't because the other metal is holding it in its arched form. Eventually, the heat builds up enough where the metal trying to straighten itself out wins the battle and the bimetallic spring straightens, disconnecting the two terminals. At this point, no electricity is flowing and the lights are off. Because no power is flowing, the resistor and the bimetallic spring rapidly cool to the point where the other metal pressing to reform itself into the arch shape wins, and there is another snap as it once again bends back into shape and reconnects the terminals, starting the process over again. So in these thermal flashes, the clicking noise you hear is just this bimetallic spring snapping back and forth from its arched form to a straightened form and back again. One telltale sign that you have a thermal flasher in your car is that when a light goes out, the flash rate of your blinkers will slow down. Less electricity is more time needed for sufficient heat to build up and snap the spring. In the extreme, where too little current is flowing, like if you try to swap out your incandescent bulbs for LEDs, your blinker will simply not blink, staying on. On the other end of the spectrum, if you hook up a trailer or something with more lights, it will speed up the blinking rate and, in the extreme, perhaps even damage your thermal flasher. Another common device used to create a blink in your blinkers is an electronic flasher. Instead of using heat and a bimetallic spring, this device simply uses some electronic circuit to control a relay. Inside a mechanical relay, applied electricity to an electromagnet creates a magnetic field that switches a metallic armature, which in turn makes an audible clicking noise. When the electricity is no longer applied to the electromagnet in the relay, a spring moves the armature back the other way, either connecting the circuit or disconnecting, depending on the type of relay, whether it's designed to be switched on or off by default. This type of system has the advantage of not inherently changing the blink rate based on the electrical draw of the lights. So switching to LED lights or hooking up a trailer won't necessarily affect anything, though this does vary some somewhat depending on the design of the circuit, particularly in how the system is designed to detect and respond to a burnt-out light bulb. But in general, as long as you're not drawing more power than the wires, fuse, etc. can handle, the system should blink at a constant rate, with the relay clicking away as it switches the lights on and off. There is also another type of electronic flasher that is a solid-state flasher, meaning it has no moving parts, making it incredibly long-lasting and reliable, perhaps using a solid-state relay. This type of system does not inherently click unless the designer specifically chooses to add something to do so, possibly added as an extra indicator to the driver that the blinker is on. In most cases, though, there will be no click with a solid-state flasher. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do click like below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Over there on the right are a couple of other videos you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one, and thank you for watching.